Hello everyone, welcome to TND Garage or Tiny Garage. Still deciding which one I should go with. Let me know in the comments below which one do you like more. Today we'll be attending to change the transmission fluid in my 2020 BMW M340i X Drive. The car has a ZF8 automatic transmission 8 speed and I'll be changing it from the OEM Lifeguard 8 fluid to this M's Oil Blue Cap ATF fluid or ATL fluid because it's lower in viscosity. For doing a fluid change in a ZF8 transmission or gearbox, it's more involving than a simple drain and fill. It has more step to it as well as the transmission oil pan has a filter integrated into one so you will want to change the pan filter as well as the fluid that's inside of it. As you can see, I have the car jacked up on all fours. You'll want to do that simply because there isn't a specific amount you'll want to drain and then fill back up the transmission with. It's also the same as differential fluids, just like uh, you fill it up until it overflows. So that's why you wanted to uh, have the car sitting as level as the ground as possible while still having that ground clearance for you to work underneath the car. But mind you that the car is sitting level to the ground on four jack sands it doesn't mean that the transmission oil pan is level to the ground or parallel to the ground. So you will want to have some kind of level meter gauge so that you know the transmission filter is actually or the oil pan is actually parallel to the ground. I'll talk more when we get to that point. The first step we're going to do is to remove the undercarriage splash shield that's held down by 2 million and 55 of 10 mils going around the perimeter of the splash shield as well as I believe 3 10 mils in the middle. When you are remo removing all of it, just mind you, it's going to fall out so I would go about removing the perimeter and then the 3 middle ones. And after the splash shield is removed, you can see that the pan filter is revealed right here, what I'm slapping on right now. And let's talk about the game plan a little bit in here. So we're going to remove, just like any other fluid changes, we're going to remove the fill plug first to make sure we can fill it up after we drain it. And after you can crack open the fill plug, then you can remove the drain plug. Here I'm pointing at the sticker right here is telling you that it's BMW lifetime fluid I don't buy it in any case. Taking a live example, it's just like frying bacon strips for your morning uh, breakfast and that you're using that bacon oil uh, that's left over for your next meal, probably your dinner meal as well. That's probably still going to be okay, but then ultimately, let's say if you sit until the next day, do you want to use that oil to cook your meal the next time? I don't think that's the best idea, even though, yes, you probably can do it, but for me, personally, I won't. And it's just like that for the transmission, even though it's very exaggerating example, but it goes with a similar concept as to it's lubricating your trans transmission internal components. How is that going to be lifetime? Someone please educate me. And I just don't see it being lifetime. Some people say it's lifetime of their warranty and whatnot. I believe that because the warranty goes up until, I don't know, say like 60,000 kilometers. And they are not going to be responsible if any components fail inside the transmission. So it's lifetime until warranty ends. Probably it's more accurate. That being said, I'm just going to change that out as well as the pan filter. So just to make sure the internal parts are lubricated properly. This clip perfectly embraces my channel name, which is t and &E Garage, Trial and Error Garage, in case you didn't know yet. On the BMW G20 chassis, the fill plug has a really tight tolerance against the frame for you to fit any type of socket in it. Here I'm pulling up a stubby hack socket that's supposed to fit over top, but uh, you can even see that I grinded down the hex bit for a little bit. It would fit to a certain extent, but there is no way for me to fit a ratchet over it or any wrenches over it for me to be able to pull or give me leverage to pull the fill plug off. 
and a lot of trial and error what I found to be most effective and really the only way I found to be able to to do it is to use a really really short arm hacks key or allen key that's going to be able to fit right into it it has a lot of clearance with a short arm allen key like that but you need something that has the leverage for you to crack it open i believe it's going to be 35 newton meter but over time it gets tightened a little bit with like rust and whatnot it's going to be who knows probably 50 newton meter and you want to be able to have the leverage to crack it open later on when we're tightening it back up we are going to try something that's relatively innovative to be able to get to the torque spec that's close enough let's get started so now you can see i'm using the short arm allen key to crack open the fill plug as soon as the fill plug is out you can see there's fluid coming out already so that's why make sure you have your drain pan ready and next i'm going to crack open the drain plug and after it's completely out you can see the fluid actually doesn't look that bad it's a little bit oxidized but it doesn't really look all that bad i don't really see a lot of metal flakes inside the fluid that's coming out uh, when i'm looking at the drain pan but later on when you're taking off the pen filter you can actually see there are a lot of metal flakes doesn't necessarily mean it's a bad thing but it just simply means the filter is doing its job to capture the metal flakes now we're trying to drain as much fluid as possible before we pull off the pen filter because the next step we're going to pull it off and when you're trying to pull it off there is going to be fluid that splash everywhere uh, we are trying to minimize the fluid that's splashing out because I'm doing it in my garage and the less clean up I'll have to do is the better it's going to be. So uh, when we're looking at the pen filter itself, it's held onto by T40 bolts. There are 13 of them surrounding the pen filter. There is a torquing sequence when it comes to installing the pen. As you can see right here, that's going in the order of one two three four five six and just basically to ensure when you're installing the new pan it's got the gasket of it, it's going to be seated properly and sealing each side by each side when you're torquing it down i am also going to try go in reverse order when i'm trying to uninstall it i genuinely don't think it's necessary but i've got time that day when i'm trying to do the transmission fluid change so that's what i'm going to do but i don't think you need to necessarily follow what i did there are several versions when it comes down to the torquing sequence some starts in the middle like the one i'm showing you right now there are also ones that start from the corners but essentially they're still looking off the same effect of getting a proper seal from the gasket so it doesn't really matter as long as you're going that pattern to make sure you have a proper seal so i'm just showing you right here that it's a t40 for all 13 of the bolts so let's get started and get the pen to be removed you may realize i'm using voiceover for the entire footage since all the audio files somehow it's gone so enjoy the drill noise as imitating the noise for me removing all the bolts what you're looking at is also my spirit of trial and error i missed a bolt so as soon as that bolt's off the pan's going to fall on you so just be careful the pan is now off you want to make sure that the gasket comes off with the pan as well as the o-ring that's at the pickup tube after you get the old pen filter off and set aside, we're just going to clean off the gasket mating area with something that's lint-free as well as with brick clean on it. I'm using coffee filter because it is lint-free. And now I'm looking at the mating area with a brighter flashlight to make sure I get every single little dirt out of there before I install my new pen. 
Let's take a quick moment to compare the new pen versus the old pen. The left one you're looking at right now is the new pen, the right one is the old pen. And the uh, new pen is made by a different manufacturer, that's why you see a different design. It's made by Hanks, probably butchering the name is German. But uh, you can see there is, I'm um, pointing at the old ring that I've been referencing. Uh, you want to make sure that it's out with the old pan or else uh, if it's still stuck onto the transmission pickup, it's very likely the new pan is not going to fit right. So that's why you want to make sure the gasket comes off with it, the old ring comes off with the old pan and you have nothing left, uh, that's left from the old pan before you put on the new one. Something else that I want to note is if you have a mild hybrid model, meaning the 2021 upwards for at least a G20 chassis, you may have a different pen design. You will not be able to use the one that I am using right now because of the start-stop filter design. And before you want to install the new pen, as I mentioned, there is this O-ring that you want to like get it lubricated before you push the pen back onto the transmission. Um, it's always, always a good idea to lubricate O-ring anyways. It slides in better without damaging the O-ring because it's still like kind of like a rubber material. You don't want to damage it with too much friction. So just lubricate it with whatever it's going in there, which is the M-Soil ATF that's going in there. I'm just going to get a dab and get it lubricated. It doesn't have to be a lot if you want to. It doesn't really matter because it's an oil pen anyways. After you make sure the gasket mating area is all cleaned off, you can now install your new pan filter. However, when you're installing your new pan filter, you want to get that O-ring at the pickup to be engaged before you press it on any further. It should kind of hold onto its own weight after you get the O-ring to be engaged. And then get all four corners, uh, the screws to be tightened tiny bit and then you can start threading in the rest of the bolts obviously everything hand tight first you want to you don't want to cross thread anything and after that you can see i'm busting out my torque wrench 10 newton meter for each of these bolts if it's going onto a plastic pen filter like mine and you will want to go back and reference that torque sequence i showed you earlier this is where it should be following that torque sequence to ensure there is a proper seal against the gasket Now this is a step that not a lot of people do, but I think it's rather important because you'll have to drain out your old oil one way or another. So might as well just measure how much came out from when you're draining it. So this is a five liter jug that I'm pulling out right now. So um, it's almost filled to the brim. So I'm going to say this is about five liter or so. I'll have a basic understanding of knowing or a basic idea of knowing that at least five liters gonna go back in because uh, the pan filter has some kind of foam filter material that when you're filling the system back up the foam is gonna absorb some of it before it starts filling up the oil pan so I will know now that when I'm after I measure it it's going to take me at least five liter of fluid to fill back up the system now onto the exciting part, we're going to perform a cold fill, but at this point, do you remember I showed you earlier about an image that even though the car is left in all fours, doesn't necessarily mean that the transmission oil pan or the pan filter is level to the ground. So you want to make sure you jack either end, depends on uh, how the car is seated, uh, and achieve for the pan to be level to the ground, and then you'll f cold fill the system until it overflows from the fill plug. After your cold fill process is complete, this is the point you need some sort of scan tool. Here I'm using a Pro 2 with an Android tablet as well as a BM3 Wi-Fi adapter. You can also use Beamer Link. What you really need to know or to be able to monitor is the transmission oil or fluid temperature. Here I know it says oil temperature sensor, but it I'm under the transmission menu on Pro 2, so that's why you will see oil temperature actually does mean transmission oil temperature or you can also see EGS temperature. I don't know what the acronym stands for, but EGS is something that BMW uses to say this is transmission. 
The reason why we want to be able to monitor the transmission fluid temperature because there is a series of action we'll have to take while the engine is running as well as it's within the window of the transmission fluid temperature. The next step we're going to do is to start up the engine and let it warm for a little bit until the point where transmission fluid temperature reaches 30 degrees Celsius to 50 degrees Celsius. You want to do by the time it's 30 something and you'll rev up the engine at 2000 RPM for 30 seconds to fill up your torque converter. Once we've done that, we're going to let the engine idle for a little bit for 30 seconds to a minute or so. And we're going to check for the temperature again as long as it's still within the same window of 30 degrees Celsius to 50 degrees Celsius. We're going to manually shift from park to reverse to drive to neutral. And then manually shift to D1, so first gear, second gear, third, fourth, so on and so forth. Even though the transmission is not going to let you shift beyond second gear, we're still going to try for the sake of trying. And you hold each gear for approximately 10 seconds. With everything said and done, you see I'm still in diagnostic mode because I want to make sure that I'm able to connect to Pro 2 and monitor the transmission fluid temperature. So at this point, I'm just going to start the engine and let it idle and the transmission is going to get up to the window I mentioned, so 30 degrees Celsius to 50 degrees Celsius. Usually I give a little bit of a leeway, even though it says 30 degrees Celsius, I usually do it by like 32, 33 degrees Celsius while still leaving me for some room later on when we're doing the warm fill process. Just speaking from experience, I realized the transmission fluid temperature when you're doing a cold start like this, it goes up in value relatively slow, but once it reaches like 30 degrees Celsius, it goes up relatively faster. So you want to be able to monitor, keep monitoring that. At this point, I think I found the perfect spot to quote unquote mount my Android tablet while still being able to hold the camera and monitor the transmission fluid temperature. You can see right now it's a little bit off with the oil temperature sensor as well as the EGS temperature sensor. So, but there is a window of 30 to 50 degrees Celsius. So I'm not too concerned. I'm just going to let it warm up for a little bit more. So I'll get back to you shortly. Coming back at it, we are at 30 degrees Celsius for our transmission oil temperature and 31 degrees Celsius for our EGS temperature sensor. I'm not sure why there is a discrepancy between the two, it's supposed to be the same thing or maybe it could be the transmission itself has the EGS temperature and then the transmission fluid has a different temperature reading with the transmission oil temperature. Not sure why, but we do have the window of 30 degrees Celsius to 50, so it doesn't really matter to us as long as both of them are still within the window. So we're going to take our first step, which is going to be revving up the engine at 2000 RPM, give or take, for 30 seconds. There's nothing specific to talk about in here, so I'm just going to fast forward this. And after that 30 seconds is done, we're going to let the engine and the transmission idle for a little bit for 30 seconds to a minute or so. And then we're going to check for the transmission flow temperature once again. As long as still within the 30 to 50 degrees Celsius, then we're good to proceed to the next step, which is to shift around. Definition of shifting around is going to be shifting from park to reverse to drive and then manually shift to D1, so first gear, second gear, and for the sake of trying, I'm also going to do all the way from manually shifting first gear to eighth gear, even though the transmission is not going to let you to do it. Uh, for the sake of trying, I'm just going to do it anyways. Note, we're going to hold each gear that we're shifting for approximately 10 seconds before you shift on to the next gear. And disclaimer, in case you didn't know yet, this video is definitely fast forwarded, just so you know. Now that we have done all the steps mentioned earlier, we are going to perform a warm fill up. Before you do that, you want to make sure you look at your transmission fluid temperature once again. But at this time, we're looking at 40 degrees Celsius to 50 degrees Celsius compared to 30 to 50 earlier. This is what BMW calls for a while that I've still asked you to perform it while it's still 30 to 50 degrees Celsius. At this point, I'm going to do what BMW suggests for the safe side, even though there isn't really a big discrepancy. 
as you can see earlier it was 41 and 42 degrees celsius for the egs as well as the transmission oil temp on which one still i should be looking at but it's still within the 40 to 50 i'm going to crack open the fill plug before you do that you want to make sure you have the new fill plug available somewhere close to your work area and then uh, once you open the fill plug there should not be any fluid coming out but if there is don't worry about it because likely you have overfilled the system earlier and this achieved exactly what you wanted but if yours doesn't like mine uh, it means it's sucked back into like the torque converter and whatnot but note that this while i'm performing the warm fill up the engine is still running you don't want to turn it off because the torque converter is going to quote unquote release all the fluid back into the oil pan which is not what we wanted and you're going to fill up the system while the engine is still running and you can see right now it's dripping it's overflowing i'm going to close back up the fill plug and hand tight it first and then torque it down since we're using a short arm Allen key, we have to come with something innovative. I was using a torque wrench on a wrench extender to approximate the torque value to a 35 newton meter. After we torque down the fill plug, we're going to use brick cleaner to clean up the surrounding area. After you clean up the area, you should have a clearer indication as to if there is anything that's leaking whatsoever. Specifically, you want to look at the surrounding area of the gaskets where the transmission fluid pan filter mating with the transmission as well as the fill plug area. If everything is stored down in sequence and properly, it should not be leaking for anything to be leaking at this point in time. Ideally, you want to go for a test drive before you refit your undercarriage splash shield back on. But I've done this a couple of times previously. I'm certain it's not going to leak on me. So I'm just going to button up the splash shield back on. As you can see, I go around the perimeter first and then I go around with the middle ones. There are approximately 2 million of these tiny little 10 mils that go around the perimeter as well as the middle of the splash shield. They should not be tightened down with an impact with a tiny little ratchet is more than enough. Here I'm just going with a tiny ratchet as I mentioned earlier around all of them to make sure they're all tightened. Lastly, let's hop back into the car and conclude this video about changing the transmission fluid and pen filter in ZFA transmission. Even though this was performed on my G20 M340i X-Drive, the procedure will be 95% similar to other BMWs equipped with ZF8, including other G-Series, F-Series, the Xs, so the SUVs, SUVs, even other auto manufacturers as long as they are using a ZF8 transmission. The only one that's a little bit different with the fluid temperature window, it's a Maserati that's asking for 50 degrees Celsius to 60 degrees Celsius. And in fact, it's been several weeks since I've changed the transmission fluid and pan filter on my G20. Supposedly from the OEM Fluid Lifeguard 8 to the Emsoil Blue Cap ATF or ATL, since it's lower in viscosity. The car has been shifting fine and great. I also have loaded a custom tune from Southern Tuning via XHP and that has been performing flawlessly as well. But going back to our video conclusion, I think the procedure about changing ZF8 transmission fluid and pan filter is relatively straightforward and self-explanatory as long as you have the guidelines I showed you in the video and you know what your next steps are. And of course, you'll need the right tools for the right job, including a scan tool or app that can read transmission fluid temperature, as well as the short arm Allen key if you are working on a G20 like I am. It took approximately 6 liters for me to complete the entire cold and warm fill process. On the safe side, I would advise anyone who tries to do this on the ZF8 to have at least 7 liters of fluid available on hand, at least on the BMWs. Two keynotes here before I end this video. The first one being quite a number of people on the internet said that they have experienced a ZF8 wine. Some say it's normal, some say it's not. I don't think that it is. 
and the cause is likely lack of fluid or inappropriate amount of fluid in the system. As mentioned in the video, even though the car is lifted on all four corners, this may not necessarily mean that the pan filter or the transmission fluid pan is level to the ground. In my case, I had to jack up the front end a little bit more to achieve a leveled pan in order for us to get a more accurate amount of fluid in the system. And the second one being, I've shown in the video that only 5 liters of fluid was drained from the system and that we fill back in approximately 6 liters, including soaking back up the pan filter. But the entire system calls for a bit more than 9 liters of fluid, which means there is still approximately 4 liters of fluid inside the entire transmission system that the quote-unquote old lifeguard aid fluid. Although the old lifeguard aid is heavily diluted with the M-soil that I'm using or whatever that you will be using, it would not be a bad idea to attend this service once again in another 25,000 miles or 40,000 kilometers later. All in all, that's it for this video. Thank you very much for staying in here with me, especially if you stay until this point of the video. It really means a lot to me and that I'm doing something right and this interests you in some way. I hope you have enjoyed the video as well as learn from what I've done and from my mistakes. If you did, please consider giving a thumbs up as well as subscribing. It helps me to be recognized by the YouTube algorithm within the community. So and to end this video, we'll have two geese that's walking in front of my car. Hopefully they don't attack me. That's it for this video. I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.